This is the day which the Lord has created for you. Wherever you are and whatever you may be feeling, allow yourself time to breathe in it, but always know that he is there for you. Amen. Good morning and welcome. My name is Katie Vroon, and along with many members of our congregation, under the guidance of Dr. Jeanette Gross, we are so excited to, to have put together a summer music worship service for you. We have entitled our service, Flowing Through the Waves. Often during these particular summer months, we think of the ocean, the salty air, and the warm sand in our toes. But, but the ocean also acts as a lovely symbol, the waves flowing and constantly changing, just like, just like the world we, we are currently living in. When I was thinking introspectively about, about my faith, as many of the musicians have done for you, I immediately thought of a quote from Isaiah, to chapter 43, verse 2, which I will now read for you. When you pass through the waters, 
I will be with you. And when you pass through the, ri- through the rivers, they will not s- sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. These words and the words in song and, and spoken by our, by our musicians to showcase our thoughts and feelings throughout this, throughout this crazy world in which we currently live. Thank you for allowing us to just speak to God through song and message, and, and we hope that you enjoy our service.
our Old Testament reading today is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, may these words that I speak and the message that I bring reach your ears and bless those who take this time to listen. Amen. I'm not going to lie. When I was told that I would be writing a sermon for today's service, I was not the most excited about that task. I've been surprisingly busy this summer, despite the current situation. I'm waking up at 4.45 almost every morning to drive to Guilford for swim practice, where immediately after, I drive to Southington to teach karate and work summer camp. As if that wasn't enough, as a rising senior, I'm also working on my many, many, many college applications writing short essays for the purpose of proving my worth to these different institutions. So then, after all that, being told, hey, you should write a sermon, you can imagine my initial reaction. All of these things just continued to pile on, and they absolutely took a toll on my ability to write well, along with a major toll to my sleep schedule. Yes, getting up at 4.45 is exactly as hard as it sounds. I had seemingly lost all of my strength. My motivation was non-existent, and I felt as if I had nowhere to go. And I know I'm not the only one in my family who felt that way. So we all collectively looked at each other, relaxed our shoulders, and said, we need to take a break. So that's exactly what we did. A few weeks ago, we packed the cars and we took a trip to Maine, a destination we chose for two reasons. The first... We stayed in a little town about 10 minutes away from the coast, allowing us, while being socially distant, to enjoy relaxing by the beach. Reading a book, taking a walk, or my personal favorite, diving headfirst into the 62 degree water. The second. As most of you know, last year the youth group went to Dexter, Maine for our mission trip. And while we were there, we reconnected with a youth group who was actually from Maine. So I wanted to see some of my friends again as a way to relive that week due to the mission trip being canceled this year. This also allowed me to reconnect with my faith, as the many stresses of my summer had caused me to neglect that part of my life a little bit. One morning, I found myself sitting on the beach watching the sunrise, and I will go on record to say I've never seen anything more beautiful than that sunrise. Watching the multicolored hues reflect off the ocean as the light hit my face, I was able to solely focus on myself, and with that, I felt the cold metal of my cross that has hung around my neck since my confirmation to over two years ago. A gift from my parents, it is engraved with a verse from Philippians that fit my current situation all too well. The book of Philippians is written from the perspective of Paul, as as he writes letters to the people of Philippi, offering them guidance and thanks after the death of Christ. In the New International Version, the beginning of the fourth chapter is as follows. This is verse 1, followed by verses 4 through 13. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. 
I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. That last verse, Philippians 4, 13, although not the exact same translation, has hung around my neck every day since June of 2018, but only in that moment did it truly resonate with me. I was not neglecting my faith because I was stressed. I was stressed because I had been neglecting my faith. I had lost my strength because I had failed to stay grounded and I had begun to fall. However, after realizing that, this strength came back to me. Despite all circumstances, responsibilities, situations, and burdens, his love refilled my strength and I was rejuvenated. I think we're all in very similar situations currently. But I, ear, but I urge you to hear these words of Philippians 4.13. I can do all things in, through Christ, who is my strength. Take some time to remember why you still come to church here every week. And let that love rejuvenate you as it has done for me. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May the angels protect
choices that I made that I wouldn't make again. Had my share of laughter, tears, and troubled times. This has been the story of my life. I have lost, I have lost. I got it right sometimes, sometimes I to this week with the new strength that God has given you. Take the time to be fully rejuvenated through him. The sun is rising. It's a new day. And remember that this is the first day of the rest of your life. Make it a glorious one. Amen.